Welcome everyone to our Berkeley engineering visit today on this beautiful Thursday, January 21st. Before we get started officially, I'm gonna take us through a little bit of housekeeping. So hello, uh, my name is Danielle. I'm gonna be moderating this visit today. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm originally from Windsor, California. I am a senior at Berkeley who majors in sociology, not in engineering, which is why I am moderating today. But um, my involvement on campus is mostly theater and performance studies, uh, Bear Stage, a student-run theater group, and I'm also a professional actor. Awesome, so a little bit about this visit. This is going to be a 40 to 45 minute presentation uh, led by two incredible, knowledgeable campus ambassadors. Um, we are going to have you type any questions that you have in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, we'll also be having polls pop up every once in a while. Uh, go ahead and answer those if you would like to share with us where you're coming from, what you're interested in. And also this visit will be recorded. A different version is gonna be available on our website. We will go over how to access those after the visit today. So this is going to be an engineering overview. So our regular virtual visit has some different content and different material about the campus generally. Um, this overview is gonna be from the student perspective. Our guides are undergraduate students here at UC Berkeley. Um, we're not gonna be giving out admissions or financial aid information simply because we are not those departments. If you want specific numbers and facts about admissions and financial aid, there are other presentations we can direct you to at the end of this visit. And as always, we will end with a Q&A section. We're gonna do our very best to answer any questions that you have in the Q&A typed. We have awesome ambassadors on the back end ready to answer them. And we will also be choosing questions to answer live with the two ambassadors that I'm about to hand it over to. So with that, I will let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Zulan and I will be your first tour guide for today. I use the she, her, hers pronoun series and I am from Milpitas, California, which is just 40 minutes away from Berkeley by a car. And so it's really close, just in the South Bay. I am currently in my junior year studying mechanical engineering. And some of the things I'm involved with on campus include the Fung Fellowship, which is an entrepreneurship and technology program. Uh, specifically, I'm on the public health track and I'm also part of the Berkeley Biomechanics Lab where I do human dynamics research. In addition to that, I'm a reader at our Haas School of Business for a finance class. I'm in the Phi Sigma Rho sorority, which is an engineering sorority. Yes, those exist. And Enable Tech, which is a biomedical student organization where we build assistive technology for people with disabilities. Thanks, Yuan. My name is Paulina. I use the She, Her, Her series, and I will be your other tour guide for today. Uh, I'm originally from Vista, California, which is a small town in northern San Diego. Uh, I'm studying political science and music. Um, even though I'm not an engineering tour, uh, an engineering student, I do have experience with uh, my friends and close peers uh, being engineering students, so I'm very excited to be on this tour with you today. And some places I'm involved on campus are our UC Rally Committee, which is uh, the spirit group that's tasked with upkeeping student and tradition on campus. Um, I'm part of a coffee student startup called Quokka Brew. I'm also in an acapella group called The Overtones, as well as a couple other organizations, Cal Student Philanthropy and Golden Bear Orientation. We're very excited to have you here today with us. All right, welcome to Berkeley. First of all, you'll see in the top left corner a drone video of our College of Engineering. So it will fly over Hearst Memorial Mining Circle and all around the College of Engineering, which is where we are visiting virtually today. And so um, one of the close-ups actually of, or the interior of one of our buildings, which is the Hearst Memorial Mining Building, which is home to our Department of Material Science. One of the engineering majors you'll hear about today is pictured in the bottom left corner right next to the 150W logo. And you'll actually see the interior there and on my Zoom background. It's one of the most beautiful buildings in, uh, on campus in my opinion, uh, although I may be a little biased. And so right next to it, you'll see a 150W logo. And that is because last year in 2020, we celebrated 150 years of women here on Berkeley, uh, right two years right after we celebrated 150 years of Berkeley's founding. So women were actually admitted to Berkeley before they had the right to vote. So you can see we're really at the forefront of um, movements like that. And so in addition to that, in the middle, you'll see a picture of our Campanile, our iconic uh, bell and clock tower, which stands at 307 feet. And it is very beautiful. And at the very top, you'll, there's an observation deck where if you ever visit our campus, uh, it's not currently open, but you can actually take an elevator all the way to the very top where you can get a beautiful view of the Bay Area and the Golden Gate Bridge and of the Berkeley campus itself. And 
Um, let me tell you about the Memorial Glade, which is our last picture in the top right corner. And that is where students like to hang out in between classes. And you'll see Doe Library, which is our university library, one of 24 in the background there. Oh, next we're gonna go very quickly over some of the topics that we're gonna go over today and during today's tour. So first we're gonna go through an overview of Berkeley followed by an academic overview. Finally, we're gonna go into the main part of the tour which is engineering information, especially about our majors and departments. We'll also go into student life and resources, ways to get involved, including labs and makerspaces, research, and finally the legacy of Berkeley engineering. So first we'll go over uh, an established history and establishment of Berkeley, excuse me, a Berkeley overview. So we were founded in 1868, which makes us the oldest and the first UC uh, of all the University of Californias. That's why uh, we're commonly known as Berkeley, Cal for California or University of California. Um, our mascot is the golden bear. While there's no such thing as a real golden bear, uh, our golden bear is modeled after the grizzly bear. And our mascot, Oski, who you'll see in the upcoming slides, is very cute and cuddly. As far as our campus size, we have about 31,000 undergraduates. And of those 31,000, about 3,700 are engineers. And of our graduate students uh, who, have, who are 11,000, uh, about 2,000 of them are also engineers. So engineering uh, is a sizable portion of our Berkeley population. Next, we're going to talk very quickly about our five undergraduate colleges here at UC Berkeley. Uh, the two main ones we'll be focusing on today are engineering and the College of Chemistry. However, we do have three other undergraduate colleges, and those are the Colleges of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, and the College of Environmental Design. You can hear more about those colleges during our uh, regular virtual visit, which I encourage you to sign up for. So first, we're going to talk about the College of Engineering, which contains 11 majors, and those will all be talked about more in depth later. We'll also go into the College of Chemistry, uh, where you'll find the major chemical engineering. That is the only engineering major not in the College of Engineering. That's only because more of its uh, requirements overlap with other engineering majors. So that way, putting them in the College of Chemistry, oh, sorry, more of its requirements overlaps with other chemistry majors. So putting them all in one college just makes advising easier. However, as a chemical engineer, you will take engineering classes outside of the College of Chemistry. Both of those colleges, both engineering and chemistry, you apply directly to. What that means is when you're submitting the UC application and you check UC Berkeley, they'll redirect you to a page where you'll select the major you want to apply under. If you select an engineering major or a college of chemistry major, they'll direct your application directly to that college. And so basically when you are admitted as the student, you'll come in um, declared as your major. So I came in declared, for example, um, in mechanical engineering. And so that way you don't have to uh, versus in the College of Letters and Science where you come in, <clears throat> excuse me, undeclared. So what that means is you would have to take a number of prerequisite classes, meet a minimum GPA before you can submit a declaration form and formally declare your major. And so another thing I'd like to talk about really quickly is transferring in between colleges. It is easier to transfer majors uh, once you're already in the College of Engineering versus if you were wanted to transfer from say the College of Natural Resources into the College of Engineering. That's only because um, it would require less paperwork. So for example, I came in as a civil engineering major and um, I decided after my freshman year that I actually wanted to transfer and <clears throat> change my major to mechanical engineering. Since I was already in the College of Engineering, I could do that pretty easily. I just had to complete one semester and fill out a form um, about like planning my four year curriculum. But if you were to say be outside, say from the College of Natural Resources, then you would have to go through more uh, paperwork just to change colleges and then change majors as well. So keep that in mind. We do encourage you to apply directly into the College of Engineering if that's what you're interested in. So now that we've covered all the general colleges, we're going to go into the College of Engineering and we'll break down all those majors so that you all can understand a little bit more about each one and see which one may best suit you. Uh, so here's an overview to begin with. I think these mottos of the College of Engineering are just so amazing because they really do encapsulate what uh, the spirit and culture of this college is. The first one is transform the lives of our students by preparing them to become successful leaders and innovators for positive change. And the other one is 
expand knowledge and create transformative technology through original research and tackle the world's biggest challenges. And I think that these themes really show uh, shine out through the students um, from all the engineering students I've met uh, in Berkeley's College of Engineering. They're so passionate, uh, innovative, really striving to create better things and make a better place uh, for people all around the world. And you'll see this in clubs and all the organizations that they form. Um, these students are really passionate about creating things and creating things that are going to make a lot of change. And that really ties into this campus culture of change making, challenging the status quo. Um, research and entrepreneurship are also very big themes. Um, something that you may hear about is our Berkeley Sky Deck, which um, is obvious. Uh, often um, is tied in with our College of Engineering, creating new startups, uh, creating new inventions. And as far as community, there's a big emphasis on compassion, passion, and social justice, um, spirit and pride and diversity and excellence. And this really resonates to the students. On the slide, you can see our mascot that I mentioned, Oski, with some of our students. And they really come from a wide variety of places and make up this amazing campus culture. All right, continuing with our academic overview. So we have 11 majors in the College of Engineering. Um, all are ranked in the top nine globally. So just wanna drop that fact in there. And uh, I talked about switching majors earlier. It is easier to switch once you're already in the College of Engineering in order to switch majors. Um, there's also a major called Undeclared Engineering, which gives you a lot more flexibility, which we will talk about later. Some postgraduate paths that students usually take include industry, so going directly into company work. So in order to help facilitate that, uh, UC Berkeley actually has a career center. They often host career fairs that where they invite lots of tech companies from all across the Bay Area and other places as well to come and set up booths and students can come and network with these representatives. And usually you can get um, internships, you can also get full-time jobs or anything that really helps with your career search. In, in addition to that, the Career Center also offers resume workshops as well as networking workshops because it's not very intuitive, doesn't come easily to most people. And I know I've definitely taken advantage of those resources for myself as well and landed an internship. So that's super cool. Um, some students also decide to pursue graduate school. I have lots of friends. I actually have a friend who's pursuing a PhD in chemistry at like another university when she graduated. So once you graduate from UC Berkeley, you can either decide to pursue masters, PhDs, or whatever, whatever program you're interested in. And there are plenty of them that you can apply to. And you definitely get your fair share of emails of other universities um, broadcasting info sessions for their programs. And one way to really like get started on that is I would definitely recommend doing research while you're an undergrad here at Berkeley, just because that gives you an idea of like what you want to do, because research can really um, it's so broad and you can take it in so many different directions. So if you can find something you're really passionate about while you're here, it can really like bring a lot of clarity for your future postgraduate paths. And in terms of major distributions, our biggest department at the College of Engineering is the EECS major, which stands for Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, followed not very closely, but Mechanical engineering is still a pretty big department and followed by bioengineering, civil engineering and environmental and civil and environmental engineering. And then some smaller majors include IEOR, uh, which is industrial engineering and, and the engineering sciences, as well as material science. And the smallest I believe is, new oh, actually smallest, second smallest is nuclear engineering by, and the smallest are joint majors. So we'll move on to our first few majors and go a little bit more in depth on what those entail. So our first major is actually engineering undeclared. It's not so much of a major as it is a program. And basically what this allows students to do is enter into the College of Engineering when they don't know which area of engineering they really wanna focus on yet. So some requirements for the engineering major are that you have to declare by the fourth semester, which means that you basically have two years to kind of explore all these classes um, and take all the pre prerequisites uh, before you actually choose which specific major you want to enter into. There's also an introductory seminar so that students really understand uh, the different components and know what they're getting into. Um, and this is a really nice way for students who may not know yet what kind of engineering areas they want to go into or they're interested in multiple areas of engineering, they can dip their feet in the water and get to test out a little bit more before making their, actually their actual declaration. 
Uh, next, we have nuclear engineering, uh, which has a huge emphasis on research and development and energy and radiation. Um, nuclear engineering is really cool because students have uh, been able to work on projects that are relevant to today, um, whether that be medicine or even working with Homeland Security to create kinds of uh, shipping containers. It's a very uh, relevant major, I would say, um, especially in ideas of like nuclear engineering. And so that's gets that allows students to get a little bit of a better look into what that would entail. Um, and as Zhuan said, really popular major is bioengineering. And you'll see this throughout the student body um, with a focus on biomedicals, information technology, gen genetics, and many more. Um, as you may have heard, one of our uh, faculty, Jennifer Downer, was actually awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Um, and she does a lot of really amazing research on campus, um, some of it having to do with bioengineering. Our bioengineering department is located in Stanley Hall, which you can see on the bottom right hand of your screen. There's a lot of uh, research labs in there for students to actually go in and do hands on work, which is a really cool thing. Um, and our bioengineering department has made amazing discoveries. They've actually been doing things like developing tissues and cells that can help people who are sick. So there's a lot of relevance in the medical field with our bioengineering, bioengineering major. Thank you, Paulina. <clears throat> Those are really vivid descriptions and actually learned a lot too. And so um, continuing with our engineering majors, next we have industrial engineering and operations research, which I will call IEOR for short, because industrial engineering and operations research is a mouthful to say every time. So uh, what is IEOR? Basically what the uh, industrial engineers do is they optimize complex, pro complex processes and systems. What that means is for large scale operations such as like Amazon or Disneyland, they actually have industrial engineers who make the processes more efficient. So they do that by making more efficient systems, by integrating workers, machine and information into the production process. And they really like make them more efficient and effective and safe. And in addition to that, I have actually a friend who works for Disneyland and she's called, she's what's called an Imagineer and she actually works on the Disneyland um, on the back end, um, optimizing those processes. So those are just some of the jobs that you can get into. In addition, we have another um, major, which is called material science and engineering. And that is um, where you learn about um, desirable material properties. So actually I took a materials class here at UC Berkeley and basically what you learn is about the strength and properties of materials. And they really dive deep into like the crystalline structure and lots of like really intricate details. In addition to that, you also learn about like function, environmental impact and feasibility. So you'll compare different types of materials, for example, like polymers, metals, and you'll also compare like, for example, manufacturing methods. What is the most effective manufacturing method that would minimize cost, but also maximize strength? So there's like sand casting, there's 3D printing, which for prototypes, and there's many different things that you can learn in material science and many applications in industry as well. It is actually located in Hearst Memorial Mining Building, which is the building you'll see pictured on the right. And inside you'll find both the material science department and many of their research labs are in the basement as well. Next up we have have uh, civil and environmental engineering and mechanical engineering. Um, so first of all, civil and environmental engineering has a focus on data, natural environments, and structures, as well as sustainability, infrastructure, and control systems. One thing I think that's really amazing about this major is that it's one of those majors that's actually taking into consideration the environment, um, the impact on people and places that we're actually building and constructing things, which is really amazing. You can see some of the students actually uh, going out into the field and doing research um, for their environmental engineering classes, which is so great. And I think that's something really special that you may not find with other programs um, is really looking at things um, in a, a larger context, which is really amazing. Um, next up, we have mechanical engineering, uh, which Ziwan can obviously tell you a lot more about than I can, um, but just a basic overview is that it has a focus on multidisciplinary projects, as well as material and ma machine design and application. So focusing on things like robotics, uh, mechatronics, um, automated manufacturing, and many more. 
you can see our Cal Steel Bridge team, which I have several friends in. It's a really cool uh, club where these students will actually go and create a steel bridge all on their own and make, bring it around and compete with other schools. So there's really that hands-on application for these majors that students get to get. Yep. Thank you, Paulina, for that wonderful introduction to mechanical engineering. I love my major. I, you, in addition to all of those things that she mentioned, such as machine shop and design, um, in addition to that, you also learn a lot about 3D modeling. You also do some coding, surprisingly, and I've actually taken an electrical engineering class. So it's a very multidisciplinary major, just like she said. And it's very like physics heavy, as well as like math computation, not as much, but pretty much very physics and dynamics heavy. And so, in Speaking of physics heavy, so we also have engineering majors, which are more theoretical and research sides of engineering and less more theoretical and less application based. So basically engineering majors, if you haven't resonated with any of the ones we've mentioned so far, you might want to explore our engineering sciences majors, which again are more theoretical, less application based. So the first one I'm going to talk about is energy engineering, which is like Oh, like what is what is that? So some of the things energy engineers might work on include en energy systems, renewable energy, as like especially in the context of sustainability, and uh, they work very closely with environmental engineering, which is another um, uh, available major in inside engineering sciences, and especially with solar power as well. So I actually have a friend who graduated uh, with an energy engineering degree, and she actually went on to work with the SoCal equivalent of PG&E. I don't remember the exact name because I'm not actually from SoCal. Paulina might know it, but I actually am not sure. Um, but the SoCal equivalent of PG&E. And so you get to work, there's a lot of application in industry as well, or you could choose to pursue postgraduate paths as well, because there's lots of cutting edge research being done in this field. Um, other um, aspects of engineering science include engineering mathematics and statistics, which is pretty self-explanatory, as well as engineering physics and environmental engineering science, which again has a big focus on green technology, as well as energy systems, science, math, biology, and physics. Okay, so next up we have um, electrical engineering and computer science, which I will refer to as EECS, as it's most commonly known. Uh, EECS is, I believe, our largest, uh, most popular engineering major. You'll find lots of students who uh, are in this major. Um, and what it is, is uh, computer science and also other aspects like uh, electrical engineering aspects, um, hands-on work that students will actually get to do, which I will compare to our computer science major uh, in the College of Letters and Sciences on the next slide. Um, but there's a focus on technological problem solving, collaboration and in industry. I think a large part of why this major is so popular right now is that so much of the topics being covered in the materials are ap applicable in the real world, um, especially with our proximity to Silicon Valley and a lot of uh, the large tech industry companies. Um, this major is a really a good starting off point for students who want to work in things uh, like tech companies um, and get their foot in the door by having hands on experience. Um, other things that the major will look at includes uh, computer aided design, uh, microwave, quantum and optical electronics and circuits. So there is a lot of like technical work that goes into this major. You can see some of the labs and buildings on the slides that students will actually be in. Uh, they have some awesome amenities for students to use. Uh, I believe Soda Hall has even levels below ground where students can go and do their um, computer science projects, which is really cool. Um, and so what's the difference between EECS and a regular computer science major um, that's offered in the College of Letters and Sciences? So EECS uh, is through the College of Engineering, so that is one that you'll apply to. It is a Bachelor of Science rather than a Bachelor of the Arts, like you'll see. Um, and it is uh, hardware and software integration, so you get a little bit of both, as I mentioned. Um, there are actually specific breadth courses for this major that you'll take. So there are four breadth courses, which are basically uh, introductory or prerequisite courses. Um, and there is ethics and specific math and physics requirements for this major. Whereas looking at our computer science major in the College of Letters and Sciences, it's a Bachelor of the Arts. So it's a little bit different. You will come into the College of Letters and Sciences undeclared. Uh, and basically after completing these uh, prerequisites that you will be required to take, you can then declare your major. 
computer science is basically software focused, mostly programming, uh, not really any of that technical circuitry that you would get in an EECS major. And there's a lot more flexibility with it. Uh, you might be able to add on other classes in the College of Letters and Sciences or um, do maybe a data science minor or something like that. Uh, there are seven breadth courses that are required in the College of Letters and Science. So you will have to take those breadth courses. They're from different areas like um, arts and literature, uh, international studies, uh, physical science, biological science. So you have to take all of those as well as the prerequisites. And it is an impacted major. So you will have to get uh, certain grades and meet a certain standard in the core classes before you can declare the major. So those are some differences to take into consideration if you are interested in computer science and maybe looking at the two of them. All right, next we're going to talk about other opportunities if you don't want to pursue a single major. So those include joint majors as well as double majors. So what is the difference between a joint major and a double major? So a joint major is a hybrid of two major areas of engineering uh, for a single degree. However, for a double major, you pursue two distinctly separate engineering majors and then um, for a single degree. So basically for joint majors, they find curriculum for two engineering majors that basically overlap. And so they integrate it into one and it makes it a lot easier to complete in four years. For a double major, you will have to pursue each curriculum separately on your own and you'll have to complete classes or find overlaps on your own because they're not um, established as a joint major. So some joint majors include basically bioengineering as well and material science, electrical and uh, EECS, electrical engineering, computer science, as well as material science, and um, a lot more. You can find a lot, a lot of the joint majors on our website for Berkeley engineering. If you just Google Berkeley engineering joint majors, you'll for sure find it. Um, we can also talk about minors. So if you don't necessarily want to pursue a major, but you do want to complete uh, if you do want to pursue some coursework in a different um, field of study, then you can pursue a minor. So there are different types of minors available in the College of Engineering. Most of the, all the departments offer um, minor options. However, there are also some additional ones as well, such as aerospace engineering, which is um, relatively new. So basically, if you're, um, for example, I'm a mechanical engineer, a lot of our uh, requirements actually overlap with aerospace the aerospace minor. So a lot of people end up completing the aerospace minor without actually knowing it, just because a lot of the classes, for example, vehicle dynamics and control or um, aerodynamic like principles, like all of those things are like encompassed within both the upper division requirements for mechanical engineering and the requirements for the aerospace minor. There are also lots of, lots of other ones. They don't necessarily have to be related. So um, I wanted to pursue mechanical engineering and bioengineering um, but I know that I couldn't do both. So what I decided to do was try to pursue the bioengineering minor. Or if you don't wanna do a minor necessarily, you can also pursue certificates. So the, there are two certificates currently offered by UC Berkeley, and that is the Design Innovation Certificate, which is offered in conjunction with our Jacobs Design Institute. I actually completed, completed this one. I would 10 out of 10 recommend it because you only have to take like four extra classes, which is super easy to integrate into your schedule. And I took, they don't have to be related to your major. So I took a class on visual design and communication. And that one like helped me like brainstorm like product pitches. I also like did a lot of like post-it note brainstorming. It was super fun. I also took like a project management class and that helped me fulfill the requirements for the certificate. So I would definitely recommend exploring that. Similarly, we also offer a entrepreneurship and technology certificate, which is really the same format, except the classes are more geared toward entrepreneurship and business rather than design. Um, design rather that be like graphic design or um, just like human centered design. So I would definitely recommend exploring those. In addition to that, we also have our MET program, which stands for Management, Entrepreneurship and Technology. And that is definitely a program I would recommend looking into if you're interested in both business and engineering and you don't know which one to pick because you would actually gra graduate with two degrees, um, a dual degree in both bachelor sciences and both business administration and the engineering major of your choice. So you can either do business plus, uh, for example, bioengineering, or you can do business plus mechanical engineering, business plus civil engineering. There's so many you choose pro, um, tracks to choose from. And basically you can apply. And the only caveat is that it's a 
Last time I checked, I think it's around a 2% acceptance rate, which I know can sound discouraging, but don't worry, because actually if you apply to an ET program and you are not accepted, they reconsider you in the regular applicant pool with all the other people who applied for that engineering major only. So for example, if you applied for both um, bioengineering plus business, but you um, don't get accepted, then you're reconsidered for bioengineering only. So it's super cool and definitely would recommend. Thanks, Yuan. So next up, we're going to uh, go into the College of Chemistry that we mentioned a little bit earlier and how this connects to our College of Engineering. Um, so I'd like to point out that on the slide, we, all, we do have the number one uh, globally ranked College of Chemistry, which is amazing. Um, it's a very small college, so only about a thousand students when compared to our about 31,000 undergraduate students. Um, nonetheless, you will apply directly into this college if you are interested in uh, any of the chem chemistry majors or chemical engineering, um, and you will apply directly in. And there are the three main majors, so chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. And basically for chemical engineering classes, um, you will overlap with uh, engineering courses or electives, taking three engineering courses outside of the actual College of Chemistry, which is really amazing. So you do get that experience in the College of Engineering, being able to take uh, engineering classes. Um, and a big fact about our College of Engineering is that actually 16 elements have been discovered here, which is amazing. That's more than any other college by far. Some of the notable ones are Berkelium, Californium, and Seaborgium, named after Glenn Seaborg, who is one of the big uh, discoverers of uh, these elements. And as I said before, Jennifer Doudna does work here at UC Berkeley. She won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. And so there's a lot of really active research going on in the College of Chemistry right now uh, with many different things. I actually have a housemate who is a chemical engineering major. And from what he's told me, chemi chemical engineering is really cool because they will let you do real world projects on a small scale so that when you actually go out and do work with things like um, nuclear products or anything like that, you'll actually have that experience from the classroom that you can apply to these larger scale models, which I think is just really amazing. I highly recommend you check out our College of Chemistry if you're interested in anything chemistry related. It's amazing. Yes, it really is. So next we're going to talk about structure and class sizes. So all classes are, um, most engineering classes are composed of a lecture section and lab section, lecture, discussion, and lab section. So um, there are three components. However, some engineering classes, which are more conceptual based, only contain a lecture and discussion. So lectures are where you sit in a really big lecture hall and then you look for auditorium and you listen to the professor speak. And one of those auditoriums is actually pictured here and it's in the top right corner and that is Pimentel Hall. And it is actually known as the rotating classroom. That is because the professor actually stands on a platform at the very bottom. It's like a three-sided platform. So each side has a set of whiteboards. So each side is its own classroom, but only one side faces the auditorium at a time. And in between, and while one professor is lecturing, another can be in the back preparing for his, preparing demonstrations for his next class. And when it's time to switch classes, you'll actually like, see them fence off the bottom por portion of the of the like auditorium and you'll actually see it like rotate right in front of your eyes. It's some like very like Bill Nye the Science Guy stuff if you ever watch that. And so um, those are lectures and those are usually bigger depending on your major, especially when you're completing your lower division requirements. Lectures can be a couple hundred students because a lot of like all the engineering majors have to take physics, they all have to take math. So those classes will be slightly bigger. However, they're um, that like large size is offset by discussion sections. And those are led by GSIs or graduate student instructors. And they basically, um, during discussion sections, you'll go over problem sets, you'll go over the homework and you'll review. You don't, they usually don't teach new material in discussion. They just go over and consolidate everything that you learned in lecture to make sure everyone has like a really concrete understanding of what's being taught. And um, Again, those are led by GSIs. Both professors and GSIs offer office hours, which are optional times outside of discussions and lectures where you can drop by their office and like ask any questions you have about homework or if you're like struggling with like a certain topic or you can ask about their research as well. And that's also a really great way to get like research assistant positions. There are some engineering classes also have a lab component. So those are usually like two to three, two, 
maybe one to two to three hours long, really depends on the class where you actually apply what you've learned. And um, that can be in the form of like, for example, actually creating a prototype. So one of my classes, uh, the manufacturing class, we got a maker's pass and they taught us different skills like laser cutting. They had a machine shop and it was really fun. And these different skills to help you build the products that you want to do that you want to create. And so that's actually a component as well. In terms of class size, again, it depends on the major. For smaller majors like nuclear engineering and material science, you start off with small, you start off uh, in general prerequisites, but once you go to your major classes, they are usually pretty small and you usually see around the same people. For mechanical engineering, which is I think around like 600 students, um, your class sizes are still like around like 70 to 100 people for upper division classes, but as you keep going into your like four years, the more upper division classes you take, usually get to, they get smaller and smaller. And so you really get to see, again, the same people. And it's really nice because you get to form study groups. Uh, there are also eye clickers, which is a way to participate in class. So a professor will ask like, for example, a question on the board and you'll have your eye clicker and you can like uh, select the answer to, your, to that question and it can be a form of participation. Other resources include the Student Learning Center where you can get drop-in tutoring, the Engineering Student Services where they hold like social events as well as professional development events, and they have um, tutors as well, especially for engineering subjects. So I would definitely recommend the ESS and for your academic advisors. So once you come to Berkeley Engineering, you are assigned an advisor and they stay with you without, throughout your four years. So you can go to them whenever you have questions about switching majors, about, uh, I don't know, like, planning your four years, if you want to add a minor, if you want to um, add research or study abroad, you can ask all those questions to your advisor. So now on to a little bit about what student life looks like as an engineering major. So these are just on your screen a few of the many, many student organizations that are offered uh, in the College of Chemistry, uh, in the College of Engineering, excuse me, uh, both by the school and by uh, students creating their own uh, clubs and organizations. So the first one is Women in Science and Engineering Theme Program, also known as WISE. Uh, basically, what this is is that it is a housing theme program. So uh, should you want to apply to this program, you will live in Stern Hall, which is on our east side of campus uh, with other women in engineering. Um, and you will not only live together, but do seminars together, um, have lunches together, take classes together, and really build a community that is centered around uh, being a woman in science and engineering, which I think is just a really great way to uh, get a good start here at uh, Berkeley. We also have other organizations like Black Engineering and and Science Student Association, also known as BESA, um, which is here to help promote uh, Black students in engineering and science, uh, also Hispanic engineers and scientists. Um, and we also have EOP STEM, which stands for Education Opportunities Program STEM. So this is for any students who may be coming from uh, underprivileged backgrounds who may need a little bit extra support uh, when coming into STEM um, to give them any support they may need within their classes. Um, and we also have the pre-engineering program, also known as PREP, uh, which helps students who are not currently students, uh, but who want to one day go into engineering in some context, uh, get a better understanding of what that entails. So on our screen, you can see several of our organizations um, that are going on. You can see an engineering career conference. Uh, that's a frequent question is how can students uh, get a get to know internship and job opportunities. There's a lot of different events like this, as well as our uh, career center that generally helps students um, of all majors find different internships and careers and be able to network with alumni or just different companies. We also have the first generation mentor programs, which is one of our many mentor programs, which basically allows uh, current students to mentor other students who uh, they who the mentors have experience who are able to help students um, who were just coming into different programs. Uh, we have our T prep program, which we mentioned before, helping students. Um, and we can also see here Kresge Library in the bottom right hand corner. I think this is a really amazing library because um, I have been in it and my friends have studied in here and basically it is a interactive space. So you go in and you have to uh, collaborate and be talking with people or else they don't let you study there because um, it is all about working together and creating different things. And so that's just a little taste of some of the programs that are offered in the engineering, uh, College of Engineering. I highly encourage 
encourage you to research anything through our website CalLink. Um, if you're interested in any specific aspect uh, of engineering or any specific club that will have all the resources you need. Speaking of clubs, here are some club and competition teams that you can join as a Berkeley engineering student, or even if you're not in Berkeley engineering, you can also feel free to join. So first we have Cal Sol, which is our solar vehicle team, and they are pictured on the bottom left. And so you'll actually see they build a solar vehicle. And in addition to that, we also have our Cal Steel Bridge team, and they do a lot of, um, there a lot, a lot of civil engineers decide to join this team, and they do a lot of work in the construction bay in Davis Hall. And fun fact, actually in that construction bay, parts of the Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge were actually tested before they were moved over to San Francisco. We also have our Berkeley Formula Racing or S FSAE. A lot of my friends are actually in the Formula Racing team and they really love the collaborative environment and also like the thrill of like creating a Formula race car. And also we have the Biomedical Engineering Society. So um, that's also like, although we don't have a biomedical engineering major, we have plenty of student clubs that are geared toward that specific path. So you can join those clubs to really get an idea of what industry is like. And they often hold like info sessions or like company info sessions. So you can really get an idea of what it's like. Um, in terms of like um, women in STEM, we have the Society of Women Engineers and I actually um, attended a few of their meetings. And it's really nice because you really find a community of women in STEM, especially in a place as big as the College of Engineering. We also have CalHex, which is the um, I think it's like the world's biggest collegiate hackathon, but there are a team of students who actually put on this hackathon where you spend two to three days creating your own, innovating your own project using tech and coding. And it's um, always a really big event and you see um, flyers all across campus for it. In addition to that, we have pioneers in engineering as well as department honor societies as well. And all of them are really definitely worth checking out. So now just to go over some campus uh, building highlights of some of the amazing uh, places that we offer on campus during a normal year. Uh, many of these places are not open right now, but hopefully they will be open again uh, in the near future. Um, so we have Siddhar Chadai Hall, which is home of Citrus, uh, which I believe stands for Center for Information Technology and Research in the Interest of Society. It's quite a mouthful, but it's a really awesome uh, program that allows students to as the name uh, says, just take in what technology and its role in society right now and do some amazing, amazing research into that area of study. Um, we have Jacobs Hall, which has the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation, um, Hessa Hall, which has a mechanical engineering and machine shop, uh, Davis Hall, which is one of my personal favorites. I've never been there yet, but I really hope to go one day um, because it has the Civil Engineering Construction Bay. And a really fun fact about that is that uh, it has to do a lot with testing different seismic aspects of buildings and things like that. So actually parts of California Highway and uh, parts of the Golden Gate Bridge have been um, taken to this lab before they were uh, put into place and actually tested seismically to make sure they were safe, um, which is just a really cool aspect being in California. Uh, we do have a fault line that runs under our campus. So uh, earthquake safety is a really big priority. And so that's just one of the many cool ways that students can get that experience with what's going on right now. Um, we also have a Richmond Field Station, which you can see on our slide, really beautiful area. Um, again, these are just a few of the buildings that are offered. I know that in the College of Engineering, there is a really cool building where you can actually go and 3D print stuff. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for students to get uh, to get their hands into things um, and the construction, uh, excuse me, the uh, metallic shop, as we saw before, offers different opportunities for students to go and create things, uh, not just through their own work, but actually make structures and make buildings and things like that. Yes, for sure. Just like Paulina said, back when we were in person, I lived at Jacobs Hall just because of the makerspace. And you get so many different resources like get uh, laser cutters, 3D printers, and like they're open until pretty late. So you can work on personal and class projects. So I would be there until like, I don't know, like midnight. And I would, it was such a great time back when we were in person. And I can't wait to go back again. Um, in terms of research, there are lots of ways to get research while you're here at Berkeley, because Berkeley is a research university. So we have many partnerships across the world. So um, one of the ways is called the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, which or URAP. And this is not exclusive to the College of Engineering. Even if you end up not applying to Berkeley Engineering, all this is available to all students 
uh, undergraduate students on campus as well. So you, you can look up professors from different departments, for example, like sociology department or any other department. And you'll see the professors as well as like the projects and research that they're currently working on. And you can apply through the URAP program and that's one um, pathway that you can take. If you're interested in engineering research exclusively, you can also check out Beehive, which is helps partner students with uh, professors in engineering or also doing research, for example, like in Inks, they're doing like, um, I don't know, like semiconductor research, nanoscale research, all of those things. In addition, we have the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is right up in the Berkeley Hills. And it's a really big facility. And sometimes they even uh, accept students as uh, research assistants. So you can actually go to Lawrence Berkeley National Lab to see if there are any research openings. Um, so other way, uh, some other more unconventional ways you can try is, for example, I actually got my biomechanics research through a class. So the solid mechanics class I was taking at the time, our professor actually worked in biomechanics, which is the field or orthopedic biomechanics, which is the field I wanted to go into. And he actually just announced to the class like, hey, I have like these two open research positions. Like if you're interested, just like reach out to me and like come to my office hours or anything. And so it was a really um, great experience. In addition to that, um, you can also try cold emailing professors. So that's what my roommate did. She basically uh, wrote an email to like every professor in the like, um, she was a neuroscience major at the time, but it, like still works either way, um, where she emailed a bunch of professors and one of them actually offered her a summer research assistant position. So that's another more unconventional way you can try. Um, in addition, we have the Siddhartha to Die Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. So that is home to the, they host the Collier Cup, as well as many undergraduate and professional programs in research. Um, just me again. Okay, so um, this is uh, actually congratulations to our Berkeley's newest Nobel Prize winners as of 2020. And so on the left, you'll see Jennifer Donna, who Paulina actually mentioned earlier on this tour, and she won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her work in genome editing, and specifically in her work in CRISPR. And on the right, you'll see Reinhard Genzel, and he has actually won a Nobel Prize in Physics for confirming Einstein's theory on black holes. So congratulations to both of our professors. And you'll actually get to learn from these like leading faculty in their fields because my friend or another tour guide actually, she actually took a um, chemistry class, chemistry, I believe, introduction in chemistry 1A and with Jennifer Donna. And she was just as amazing of a professor as she is a researcher. So you'll definitely encounter these amazing people on our campus as well. So speaking of notable people, we have some notable figures and alumni who have uh, been Berkeley College engineers. Um, so first off, we have Rube Goldberg. That may sound very familiar uh, because he was the creator of the complex machine, the Rube Goldberg machine. He was also an engineer and cartoonist, but he's best known for his machine, which usually uh, encompasses a bunch of different moving parts to get to one end goal. It's really common in high school. I know I made a Rube Goldberg machine when I was in high school. We also have Dean Liu, who is an instructor, researcher, and administrator, and the first ever female dean of uh, the College of Engineering, which is really amazing. We just celebrated 150 years of women at Berkeley, so her achievements are really notable. We also have Shafi Goldwasser, who won the Turing Prize, which is basically a Nobel Prize in computer science. So she's made great strides in the computer science fields. And we also have Steve Wozniak, uh, who you may know as the co-founder of Apple. He, while Steve Jobs handled a lot of the aesthetic things, Steve Wozniak was actually the one who created all the code for Apple and did all the technical work. Uh, so we're really glad, glad to have his, him as an alumni of our college. Um, and as I mentioned, we just did celebrate 150 years of women uh, at Berkeley and 150 years of women in engineering, which is so amazing that women were able to uh, be a part and really help build our program here. Awesome, thank you guys so much for leading us on this virtual visit today. Um, we have a couple of questions to answer live before we wrap up our virtual visit. So let's get started. Um, our first question is going to be for Ziwan, and this question is, what is the coolest project or assignment that you've completed or had a friend work on in engineering? Um, okay, there are so many. I really don't know how to pick. Um, I think I just really like like the design and like 
construction aspect of mechanical engineering because you get to do both design and like actually making the product. One of my, um, one of the ones that I really, really enjoyed was in my 3D modeling class. So we learned to how to model like 3D objects in SolidWorks and we actually created a wind turbine at the very end. It was our final project. And so we got to design like the blade of the wind turbine and we had to like go back to like research papers about like how to make them more efficient, how to produce more energy. And so we actually designed the blade as well as the tower itself. So it was up to you whether you wanted the like singular two, I'm probably just going off on my own, but like if you want the singular tubular structure or if you want like a lattice structure. And so um, there was just so many like moving components in it, like a, like a lot of engineering related projects. And so basically once we designed it, we actually got to 3D print the structure and it was, it was too big to print in one go. So we had to print it separately and then glue it together. And then we did a, like, we went to the basement of Hesse Hall and that's where we did like stiffness and power generation tests. So we hooked it up to like um, a battery and then we like had a moving fan and then we saw how much energy it produced. And then we also um, weighed like, we did a stiffness test to test the strength of it. And that's really cool just cause like you built like a mini scale like wind turbine, like it actually works, it's kind of crazy. And so there's just so many, and like the process of learning how to 3D print too is super cool. Cause then you just get to watch the machine and stuff. It's really cool. Um, and so I don't know, that was personally one of my favorite projects. Also it was a group project. So I got to meet a lot of the friends that I currently am in study groups with and who I've seen in a lot of upper division classes as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> I really liked listening to you talk about that. Um, so our next question is going to be for Paulina. And this question is, are there programs that are available specifically for women in computer science or engineering? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, there's several different really great organizations for uh, women, specifically in computer science and just generally in engineering. Um, as we mentioned before, Society of Women Engineers is a really good place to start. They offer all kinds of resources and support for women who are coming in, um, help with applying to graduate schools, help with coursework, all kinds of things like that. Um, we also have a really cool thing specifically for uh, EECS, um, which is encompasses a bunch of different programs, but one that stuck out to me is called a CS Kickstart, which my freshman year roommate actually participated in. It's a really cool program where basically you'll come to Berkeley before your uh, freshman year and you'll get to meet other women who are interested in majoring in computer science. You'll do a bunch of projects together, um, learn a lot about coding, and then you really uh, you know, get to make friends and also get to know what the program's like before even starting at Cal, which is, I think, an amazing opportunity. Um, as I said, we also have the WISE Women in STEM program, which is a great place to start out uh, for women who may be interested in those fields. So I highly recommend um, those three as good resources for women in STEM. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I know that a lot of um, women who are entering STEM fields fields are curious resources the university has to support them. So thank you so much. Um, our next question is for Zuan, do engineers feel separated from other students in other colleges? And then how can you get to know students from across the university if you are in engineering? Um, yeah, for sure. That's a really good question, actually. I feel like, yes, sometimes I do feel a little like <clears throat> isolated just because once you um, start off like once you complete your prerequisite classes, which are again, like with other engineers as well, and you go into your like major specific classes, I basically, I see a lot of the same people and like mechanical engineering is like still very predominantly male field. So I see a lot of the same people, which is good because they're my friends, but also like I see them all the time in all my classes every day. <laughs> and so it, it can get into that cycle where it's like, oh, I feel so engrossed in like the College of Engineering. And it might feel a little isolating just because like you don't have as many classes with other people outside of your major, um, just because like there's so much like requirements to come, or there's not that many requirements to complete. But if you were like to complete a lot of like mechanical engineering classes, it can feel like that sometimes. But one way I found um, really helpful is to like is join clubs and like they don't have to be related to your major. So like, or join, or like, for example, to a job like campus ambassadors, you could consider being a tour guide as well. And this is where I found like the majority of my like non-engineering friends, just because there's such a diversity of majors here. For example, Paulina is like political science, Danielle is sociology 
sociology. And I've actually like, that's led me to like, from these recommendations from these campus ambassadors, that's led me to take classes outside of my major. So I actually took a sociology class last semester. So that was really fun. And um, it's like, you have these, the space to, in your schedule to actually incorporate these classes, but you really don't know which ones to take because there's so many classes here at Berkeley. And I think meeting people outside of your major is super important. Other ways is like, I joined the Fung Fellowship, which is like open to all majors. And that's where I learned a lot about public health because it, and, I didn't have much background in public health, but I do want to work in the biomedical field. So that also gave me a lot of really good insight because I got to talk to like molecular environmental biology majors, um, as well as public health majors, um, political science majors, and like all these different like aspects of political health that really like, because it can encompass so much. So I would definitely recommend joining clubs and as well as like applying to programs that like, even if you don't think like might it be immediately be right for you? Like just like taking that leap and applying and seeing if like it's something that you want to pursue. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's a lot of great advice for our um, prospective engineers. So thank you guys so much. The last question that we are going to ask today is one for both of you. Um, and this question is basically what brought you to Berkeley? Um, what brought you to what you study? What made you decide to commit? What about Berkeley um, speaks to you? And we can go in any order that you guys would like. <laughs> I can start off. Um, so basically, when I was applying to colleges in my senior year of high school, I knew that I wanted two things for sure. And those were to study political science and to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, in my mind, going to Washington, D.C. was a great way to be politically active, um, to be in a place that had a really rich history and tradition, um, and that was very appealing to me. And so I was encouraged by my counselors to check out some other things a little bit closer to home because I had never lived anywhere except for Southern California before, so that was going to be like a big culture shock. So I ended up applying to several UCs, not really doing much research into them, not really expecting to get in, but I did get into UC. Berkeley, which I was really excited about. And so I decided to actually come to campus during my senior year and kind of see what the atmosphere was like. And coming to campus really changed my mind about uh, where I wanted to go to school. I really fell in love with not only just the beautiful, uh, lush nature on campus, but the passion of the students, um, the hardworking attitude, the never sleep, always busy kind of uh, drive that I didn't really see at other schools. Um, I was really impressed by how diverse everyone's backgrounds were. And that really drew me in um, to coming to the school. And and also Berkeley has such a rich uh, political history and of political activism and being really important on a national stage. And I didn't know that until coming here and learning about things like our free speech movement. So I ended up um, coming to Berkeley and I stayed here because I really think that while it wasn't the place I expected to go, it was the place where I belonged. And I'm really happy that I made that decision. Um, yeah, that was a really great story. And so mine is a little different. I actually, when I was applying for colleges, I actually wanted to go as far away from home as possible because I wanted that whole like independence and like, um, and I thought the only way to do that was to be like geographically like distant from my home. So this was the last place I thought I'd end up because again, I'm from the Southern Bay area. So like a 40 minute drive. So not a very long drive, uh, especially compared to Paulina's. And so, um, the thing that really drew me to Berkeley, actually my brother graduated from Berkeley, so he really like pushed me in that direction. And I decided to go to what is called Cal Day, which is our annual open house day. And that's when like all these like student clubs come out to like table and like um, hand out flyers to you. You can attend um, mock lectures. You can also just like get a glimpse of the campus at its finest. And on that day, it just hit different. I don't know, like the sun was shining extra night, like extra well, and it was just really, really great atmosphere and even after that I I did like Berkeley so I did end up coming but I didn't love it at the time but Ger Berkeley is something that like really grew on me and the biggest component or like reason for that is because of the people and everyone you meet here is so passionate about what they do especially like as you can see from today's tour and from like all of the like student clubs and competition teams here like you'll see people really like 
love pursuing what they do and talking about it. And so I think it's like the cutest thing when you meet someone and it's like they they start talking about a topic and they just keep going. Like even if you're not listening, they don't <laughs> they don't care. Like they just love what they're doing so much that they can just keep going on and on about it. And I think that's just like the general vibe I get from everyone in Berkeley. And I really love it because like because they're passionate, like I, that motivates me as well. And it really just creates a really good atmosphere overall. Awesome. Thank you guys both for sharing. And I definitely relate to having someone tell you about something that they love, regardless of if you're listening or not. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for joining us on our virtual visit today. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch, you can follow us on Instagram at visit UC Berkeley. Um, if you have any questions that didn't get answered today, you can also email us anytime at tour at berkeley.edu and one of us student ambassadors will answer your questions for you. You can also check out our Bear Talk blog, which is where our students talk about daily life as a UC Berkeley student, Bear Talk berkeley.edu. You can also check out different recorded virtual visits like this one on our YouTube channel at Visit UC Berkeley. Uh, if you'd like to check out our coronavirus response over this last year, you can check out coronavirus.berkeley.edu. And if you want to see how we celebrated 150 years of women at Berkeley last year, you can check out 150w.berkeley.edu. For more information, you can visit the engineering department directly uh, on their website at engineering.berkeley.edu. And then last but not least, uh, you can go back to our website visit.berkeley.edu to sign up for ambassador student panels and general overview virtual visits that are not engineering specific. With all that said, thank you so much for joining us today again, and we will send you off with a classic Go Bears on a three if our guides want to join me. One, two, and three. Go Bears! Go Bears.